Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, March 28th, 2016. The year of the yak. Whatever the fuck it is in the Chinese New Year. I have no idea. Isn't that New Year next next uh, next month? How does that work with those people? You know? How do... Like... I don't, I don't get it. I, I, just don't, I don't understand why we're on standard and everybody else is on metric. Can we just pick one fucking calendar, one unit of measurement? You fucking go over to Europe. Jesus Christ. Metric and then some old guys talk, hey, wait, fucking 20 stone. 20 stone? <laughs> I mean, I guess we're still saying horsepower. Jesus fucking, well, what size stone? What are you, a fucking Freemason? Um, is your buddy in the Illuminati? Is that where he's at? Uh, your little secret group? You think you're going to make it? Buying up land on the aquifers? Is that what you're going to do? And then what? Huh? All the robots are going to take everything over, right? You phase everybody out, but, uh, but except you. And then you you guys. You guys are going to be good. And then all the robots, for some reason, aren't going to turn. How many fucking movies do you need to watch before you realize that they're eventually going to turn on you? Stuck on you. You made a fucking robot, now it's choking you off with your dick. And you deserve it. Mighty glad you stayed. There you go, that was a little Illuminati with uh, Lionel Richie. How do you like that? Um, somebody sent me this fucking video. They go, hey, you might want to watch this thing. And it was basically this person was talking about, uh, was showing how the automobile put the horse out of business, you know, which was so funny to me. Like the horse was upset, like, oh, fuck. You mean human beings are not going to ride on my back anymore? God, what, what, now what do I got to do? I can't run free on the plains? Um, I guess the horse population dropped off, but like nobody who was, no, you know, most of them are born into, uh, I guess you really don't see horses running around, do you? Maybe out in Wyoming. Yeah. See a lot of cows at the Waffle House. I'm sorry. But why would you do a fat joke, Bill, this early in? Come on. You're better than that, Bill. Hang on a second. But come on, Bill. Okay, but we didn't do this a while. Can we try to fucking have, like, just a certain standard of comedy? Do you got to go that low? You know, you got to attack the broads and fat people all at the same time that early? Hey, you know, whatever. You got to shoot your way out of a slump. It's my second attempt to get this thing going. This is one of these times I'm recording the podcast, not because I'm feeling it. It's because I have to because I got shit to do tomorrow. So uh, I got to kind of knock this thing out on Easter. So anyways, anybody, somebody shows me this fucking thing. So the guy shows how the, the car put the horse out of fucking business. And uh, yeah, like I said, like, like the horse is upset. It's like when you watch those weird commercials where like uh, the Mr. Potato Heads are sneaking off to eat potato chips. There's some sort of weird like undertones of cannibalism going on there. And it's supposed to be adorable. I don't, I don't get those commercials on any level. Um, but uh, totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So they were basically showing how computers and everything being automated is going to phase everybody out. And there's going to be this mass unemployment that is coming um like this is fucking groundbreaking thought i mean a dummy like me has been saying this for fucking ever right and he just kept going like oh so you're in this industry well you're not safe either you think you know you actually you're a computer programmer well guess what you're not safe either buddy just fucking relax and like he just kept coming with that tone and at some point i was just like well you're gonna fucking shine that light in yourself there maybe he does by the end i couldn't listen to him what about condescending douchebags who think they know everything narrating over these fucking videos? You know, with your big dude, I called it. Really? Or is technology in the future going to get rid of jobs? Yeah, I had no idea. It's only been doing that since the beginning of fucking time. And these fucking people are just forever forecasting that the sky is going to fall. This is the fucking thing. Eventually, the sky will fall. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Everybody's been trying to predict it ever since that fucking Nostradamus douchebag, all the way down to a moron like me. And the bottom line is none of us know what we're talking about. Oh, the lovely Nia. I'm busting in on your podcast. Well, get a microphone and a, and a plug. They're in, the, uh, they're in the closet. So the bottom line is nobody knows when all this shit's going to end. So just, just fucking go enjoy yourself. You know, I just feel like this fucking all this whole presidential election. You got you got one loon. It's in the clo- it's on the closet on the top shelf. 
You got one lunatic on the fucking left, another lunatic on the right, and then you got this fucking, I don't know what she is in the middle. You know, she's not really in the middle. She's just more of the same. You know, they're going to, they should just wheel her into the White House like fucking Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> one of those fucking masks on. You should have to watch her awful fucking mouth. You need the plug too. Oh, I got the plug over here. Let me hit pause so the listeners don't have to fucking listen to this shit. And with that, the magic of the pause button. We were able to get by all that. Don't you wish you had a pause button in life, Nia? I certainly do, Bill. When all of a sudden something bad was going on, like, you know, I was in the middle of one of my long, drawn-out stories. You could, Well, I actually want to fast-forward, wouldn't you? I felt that your listeners might need rescuing from that. <laughs> from, oh, is that what it is? <laughs> no. Let me just bring it down I here because you're breathing in. into the mic here. There we go. Yeah, don't do that. Just have it. Just hold it down a little more relaxed. You know, like you're Every sitting there with the I drink in your hand. You're always telling me how to use the microphone. Yeah, because you don't. I'm, I'm just, all right. Well, fucking use how you want to use it then. I got my own style, Jeez. man. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you know, you sound. Sometimes you sound like a. You know, when a little kid answers the phone, wow. they just pick up the phone. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> And you're like, hey, what'd you do today? Did you have a good day? And they're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest thing ever. I just was talking to my niece, and it's just like, you got to like, you can't an- answer. If you just ask them yes or no questions, mm-hmm. you got to be like, what did you do today? You can't be like, did you have fun today? Because they won't elaborate. They'll no. just go, yes. <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck, I need another question. Yeah, they're not the greatest conversationalist, but... Oh, they're they're brutal interviews. That comes- <laughs> they're brutal interviews. They just they- that's you, oh, is that why child actors are so creepy? You know, like little kids because it's like you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't be this articulate. You shouldn't be able to just like elaborate in a way because you're a kid. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's it's the combination that they talk like adults. They're making more money than you are, right? And they're wearing that little talk show suit. The whole thing, and they just be, and they just sit there, and they cross their legs like an adult does when they do panel, and they'll just be like, you know, so what was it like working on blah blah blah? And he'd be like, oh, he was great to work with. I've I've been a huge fan of his stuff. Like I know, it's yeah, so for the strange. last six years, my whole life basically. I don't think they should make little kids do interviews. I feel like that's. I think it's one thing for them to do movies and stuff, but I don't think they should be doing interviews and press and stuff. I just feel like that's weird. I don't think people should talk to little kids. Period. <laughs> like no, <laughs> like seen like unheard. little kids. I don't talk to little kids like little kids. No, neither do I. And I think that that is a like. I think it weirds them out after the age of four to be like, oh, look at you, and they're just looking at you like, yeah, yeah. You know, like do you remember in uh, remember in Young Frankenstein when he just goes like, it is alive. I've never seen it. It is alive. And Frankenstein's sitting there look, looking at him like, dude, what the fuck is your deal? No. Gene Wilder? No, oh, no. You never saw that movie? No. Walk This Way? You haven't touched your food? Are you quoting the movie or are yeah. you just saying words? You're quoting the movie? <laughs> Did you have a pot cookie? <laughs> no. No, like... Uh, yeah, how have you never seen that movie? It's fucking hilarious. Is that the one where he's always going Frankenstein? Yeah, Fran- Frankenstein. Because okay, he's I remember those like... clips, but I don't. Wasn't there something called well, Young Frankenstein with Yahoo Serious, that comedian from Australia? <laughs> what was uh, that movie? <laughs> well, God knows, I always fuck up the name. It's the one with Gene Wilder in no, it. No, I think you're right. That's that's the name of a Gene Wilder movie. But wasn't there something with Frankenstein with Yahoo Serious? Am I just? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know why there's like a about. wind tunnel where you're where you're talking. Like I, you, you know what it is? Does it sound bad? No, because this is what you do. You're up here, and then you're down here, and then you're here. You're moving it all around. So what do I do? You need a steady hand on that microphone. You, See? You don't move your hand at all. Uh, I'm I'm pretty consistent. I just I rest it like this. I rest it against my chest, my chesticles. Okay, so just like my this. male my male pecs here, my chesticles. Does it sound far away though? If I do this? Yeah, it does. How about this? That's fine. This is good. That is good. All right. That's right there. Now, just don't move and freeze for the next 50 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm probably going to leave soon. I just came in to say hi. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know if you had any questions from... Oh, that hasn't come in yet. Oh, so what are you going on about? Frankenstein? No, I was talking about the Illumin... This fucking video somebody told me to watch where it was just like, this guy's just saying how technology and robots are going to phase everybody out. 
And he just kept, you, you know, oh, you're a milkman? You think you're safe? Check out this fucking robot and everything. It's just like, yeah, well, what about condescending douchebags who narrate videos? Like, they probably already have a robot to do that, right? <laughs> Don't they? To do what? I'll tell you this. To just narrate shit. They already have the fucking robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> Or even that's just a voiceover. That can somebody, fucking can somebody woman- please make a poster? It's like a horror film. And what did you say? That weird robot lady in the elevator. I want that somebody fucking to- robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> I want somebody to do <laughs> a poster for a movie with your face looking very concerned. And there's like an elevator. No, she's it. depressing. She's in like every fucking <laughs> elevator, and it's like going up. And then when she says going down, she goes going down and she really like like your whole life is going in the shitter and i can't tell you how many people i've been in the elevator i go it's so fucking depressing they're like i know i hate it it's not just me okay you know it's all of us out there in the ramadas (laughs) you know hoping they got that little waffle flippy thing down there for the continental breakfast that's right those stale blueberry muffins those little (laughs) bite-sized ones that for some reason give Give you a, what do they call this? Your little muffin top. Muffin tops. Those things are like little grenades for your gut, mm-hmm. for your belly, you know? You just pop one of those in there and you come like like Homer Simpson. Yep. Oh, you're going to do this? All right. Let's get into the, well, let's get into this part of the, oh, I thought you were giving me shit. No, no, no. I'm listening. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> just, doing, just doing that shit. <laughs> let's talk about uh, your, your little trashing that you took. You took like a oh, cellar God. level, comedy cellar level trashing today. We were out to brunch uh, with yeah. my mother-in-law, yeah. my brother-in-law, my uh-huh. sister-in-law, and yep. you and me. And we go out to we go out to uh, lunch, and and you are the biggest sweetheart. You got you, you have a wonderful <laughs> sense of humor. You're a cutie pie, but when you talk to the wait staff or just in general, I still don't see it. Oh, and everybody that was in agreement, you have you you put a little mustard on it. You have like a, can you get your shit together or what? Like how many times do I have to ask you the first time? Like when the lady came over <laughs> and she goes, what did she ask? You and I were sitting down while my At a brother, six top. Yeah, at a six top while my mom and my brother were outside waiting for my sister. So we went to get, get our table and she said, hi, can I get you guys something to drink? And we both said waters. And she goes, okay, and can I get you some appetizers? And I said, we're just, we're waiting on three more. That's all I said. But you make it seem like no, no. I was like, um, excuse me. No. You had this tone of like, bitch, why would two people sit at a six top? There's obviously more people coming. You, you had a little fucking. And there were menus. And there were menus. That, see, there it is. <laughs> and there were menus. And it was totally, that's what it was. The fact that there was menus there and she didn't do the math. You just have this, well, what the fuck's wrong with you? I, but I don't think that I'm a difficult person to serve in a restaurant. Would you say that? Uh, I don't what, send things the back. Way, the way I that don't... you do it, the way that you do it, it's, it's one of those fucking zingers. It's a tone. So the person, like you said something nice, but there's a tone in there that makes the person a step and a half away, kind of <laughs> cock their head like, <clears throat> was she just being a fucking asshole there? Am I like? Yeah, you were accusing me of being shady. It's basically what it was. And that's not my intention. I just, you do, you do know though, I, I not do shady. A, shady is like dishonest. You're saying that, that no, no shady as in I'm being shady the way throwing I shade. Yeah, Are you I, going down? <laughs> <laughs> going down. Um, I, I just have, a, I definitely have a little less patience than normal perhaps. At a restaurant. This is good. You're gradually And I it. do feel that um, I don't like it when they're not on top of things. That's all. And I mean, it wasn't just for me. Like, my mom got her salad before she got her wine and well, the rest of us got drinks. And like, you know, me and my brother and my sister all had mixed drinks. She had wine. Like, hers should have been the first thing that came out. And then we all get our stuff and then she gets a salad with no wine and I said to her, and she has a wine. So the when she brought over my mom's fat salad, I just said, and she has wine. I wasn't like, my mom ordered wine, and she should have gotten that first. I don't do all that. No, you don't go to that level. Yeah, so what's the problem? No, you have a fucking tone. <clears throat> I can't do it. The way that you fucking do it, I just, I always look at you and go, go easy, Nia. Just fucking take a little <laughs> off your fastball there. You just have this fucking, dude, your brother had agreed. Your sister agreed. What did my mother say? She pleaded the fifth. 
She goes, I'm not going to get involved in this. Because she does the same thing, to be honest. I'm not trying to throw my oh, mom and that's under what the your, bus. Oh, that's what your brother said. What? Your brother goes, when your mother would talk, said that's where she gets it from. Well, I mean, my mom definitely has been known to... Complain about food. She bitched about the food in Italy. The, the funniest moment. thing ever. Don't keep saying. Don't keep spreading that rumor. You know, I guess I'm rumor. just. I, I guess I'm just used to a sandwich that has meat on it. More meat on it. <laughs> More meat on it. No, I mean, I think yes. We, we how hard have, did we tease her for complaining about food in Italy? We teased her a lot, but then, and then she's she a good sport about. Else. Yes, yeah, she's a good sport about it. But um, no, I mean, my mom has a tendency to be like just to the point with people like that because you know, I'm just letting them know. Listen, this was the Sunday wait staff. This was the Easter Sunday wait staff. Like I said, you're not get, you're not getting the the cream I just the feel like the, of wait staff on Easter Sunday. Oh, like, let's wow. be real. Wow. You're just, I mean, so you're going on. in there with that attitude. Now, this is all this type of fucking predisposed thought <sighs> and tone that guys like know, me, guys I'm like so, me, I'm gonna offend somebody because somebody did a shift at a, no, no, a no, restaurant no. I'm saying on Easter Sunday. You have, and they're gonna say that I'm saying that they're not the creme de la creme. But if you had been in this restaurant, okay, so I'm not talking about you. If you had been I in had this restaurant, time. you would have seen just how it was a little off. That's all. And I wasn't like throwing a temper tantrum or being demanding. Yeah, you, you have, keep saying you I have, was demanding. Because, and Nia, I was you have demanding. this fucking <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Every fucking place we go, when you order, you have, really? I'm always like, easy, Nia, just easy. Just all you got to do, just pump I the just, brakes a little. I just feel like I'm, they ask me what I want and I just tell them what I want and what I need. And I'm. The thing is when you order, I think you're fine. Okay. But then it's when, when everything <laughs> isn't chop, chop coming your way, you have a way of like, can we get some more bread? <laughs> like, Please. Like you have this, I can't, I'm, that's, that's, I lose that's my patience. too, yes. I lose my patience. So you're fucking that's agreeing true. with me. I agree that I have a low patience for service that is not of the quality that I feel that it should be. <laughs> yeah. I know. I sound, well, here's the thing. Yeah. I sound crazy. I know. And if they fuck with your food, they're going to fuck with my food too. So it's just fucking, the, the wait staff has an unbelievable amount of power that you're not really realizing. To fuck with your life. I realize that. I was a waitress, remember? I understand how it all goes down. I just... And what happened to you at that job? You got fired. And here you really? are. You're going to really oh, gonna yeah. go there? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I got fired over some <laughs> bullshit, okay? And they could never even tell me no, why I got fired, okay? They were like, oh, you told somebody that they couldn't have iced coffee. And I said, oh, you told me that we don't serve iced tea anymore because it's the fall. And they're like, oh, but you still can have iced coffee. And I'm like, oh, I didn't fucking know that. And that was an example of one of the reasons why they fired me. Bullshit. It was over I some bullshit. You, uh, okay? I so think there was a little mustard. Not... A little mustard getting slung around in that place. <clears throat> you know what? You probably had the same fucking attitude, the same lack of patience with the people <laughs> ordering those fucking <laughs> bar flies. Actually, no, you did a great job. That was one of my favorite times when I was first in getting in there. Yeah, you used to work cute. at this place. It doesn't exist anymore. The Allstate Cafe on yeah. uh, the west side in New York. Like 72nd. And, and she used to work the lunchtime shift. Mm -hmm. And I would come in as a fucking, you know, no name magook comedian right so mm -hmm. my days are free my mm -hmm. phone's not ringing you come in <laughs> every day that i was working it was so cute you come in with the new york post you come in with the paper oh, i loved it and you'd sit in the same booth and you'd i'd get a burger, burger oh it's the shit and i would serve rosa would you. come by de rosa would come Joe and you looked would come. adorable you yeah. looked adorable people that loved you there fun. people you, you got you got the shaft there i just brought that up i definitely got the you. shaft there because i had friends there but restaurants are just they're weird environments. Anybody and that's the only place you ever got fired you, from. Weird. And I remember Never how hard you took that because every place else you've just gotten promoted, promoted, promoted. That's the oh, only place. I cried. Yeah, you cried. <laughs> so I think maybe that's why you have that fucking attitude when you go in there because what? it brings you back. And no, rather, that's ridiculous. Well, then I, maybe you're just not a nice person. I'm a nice person. <laughs> but no, I get impatient at restaurants. I will cop to that. Okay, fine. I, I cop to being impatient at restaurants. Well, do you remember when you were a wait, wait, waitress and people were, like, impatient with you? How did that make you feel? It didn't make me feel good. Okay. So. 
the next time we go out, do you think maybe... Uh, I'll just let you order for me. How about that? Make it all nice yeah. and old school and traditional, just like you like. That, well, yeah. I liked it when there was defined jobs. Defined gender roles, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well... I'll let you it, have it, this it, one. It made then. it made uh, I'm such a, a shrew to deal with when you take me out to eat. It made it a lot easier. What do you mean? The questions just came in, by the way. Okay. One of them's skin infection. <laughs> <laughs> what am I a doctor? Somebody um, wrote you about they got they were getting married or they're engaged and their fiance wanted to have a Little Mermaid themed wedding. Do you yeah. remember this question? Yeah. Yeah, because I got sent it to Andrew sent it to me, too, um, to comment. I mean, obviously, I'm late, but I just... First of all, I just don't think that's a real fucking question. I didn't either. Are you... Okay, good. I didn't think it was real, but it's I was so, like, if like, this is real... What 28-year-old person would really... Like, no 28-year-old woman wants to have their fiancé dress up as... Who was it supposed to be? Neptune? Um, You know... Because Good. that doesn't make any fucking sense. Because right. Neptune is her fa- would, would would be uh, the Little Mermaid's father. Yeah, I, I, it just seemed he like he would joke. be dressed up as right. Prince Eric. And the fact that you didn't know that just proves that you lied. Because a girl who's really into Little Mermaid, like I am, would know that those are the facts. So, well, maybe they're just talking about. Okay, here we go. Bizarre <laughs> thirteen most bizarre and unusual wedding themes. All right, here we go. Look, these people are dressed up like fucking monsters. All right, look at these dopes. Oh, they're both dressed like zombies. zombies. Yeah, no. This isn't really, this isn't good for the podcast because okay. people can't see what we're talking about. Yeah, well, we can comment on it. I, can you have a little faith in me? Jesus, oh. stop treating me like a waiter. <laughs> um, oh, God. <laughs> having I'm your wedding at a, at a department store. These people got married at TJ Maxx. All right. No comment. No comment. Ooh, okay. Your entire party can be superheroes. All right. So here, this is getting towards uh, Little Neptune or whatever the fuck it was called. Little Mermaid. <laughs> Little Mermaid. Okay. So one was dressed like Wonder Woman. The other one was dressed like Batman. Yeah. How out of shape is the Batman? It's a loose fitting fucking Batman suit. He looks horrible. That's some shit that you regret later. He looks like old Batman. Like, you know, when your skin loses the elasticity. Super Mario Brothers can smash it up at your weddings. That's a wedding cake, a Super Mario Brothers wedding. Just show up naked. Mm-hmm. Okay, now is this, seem, is this seeming... Uh... Wow, what a bunch of fucking weirdos. <laughs> a roller coaster of a wedding. People get married on a roller coaster. Yes, I, I could see that. I Jump see off that. a bridge while you say I do. You get the metaphor, Nia? Yes, is they hitting symbolic. you over the head with you at all? Yes. Uh, make it so somebody has in their wedding ring to boldly Star go Trek. where no man has gone before you. This is, this is, you, you seen the theme here? There's a Shrek wedding. Oh, really? Well, anyway, I, I thought the question said that the dad get thrown into a shark cage was not the dad, but like the, the groom was supposed to be dressed like Neptune. And that just would not make sense unless he was, this is all this comic con but... shit. All these fucking nerds. Try to find Middle Earth for the wedding of your dreams. Rocky Horror Picture Show and a zombie wedding. I mean, it's just people out there that think that that shit's cool. I still thought it was a bogus question. I have, I don't fucking know. Hmm. What, what, what do I know? Okay. okay. Um, I was going to tell the story of seeing the old guy fall off the scooter. I hope he's all right. Jesus Christ. You helped him, though. Well, what was I supposed to do? I was oh, the first person there. Billy Bird of the Rescue. Fucking guy rolling down the street, sliding on his face. Poor guy. Oh. <laughs> That's terrible. He was fucked up. That's he terrible. wasn't. He had raspberries. He knocked himself out. He came around. He was spitting out. He was pulling out little bits of teeth. <laughs> and I don't know why. It was horrifying when I saw it, but now I can't talk about it without laughing. It's just because he was on a scooter. I had basically, I was. Um, Oh, I'm not going to say all the information because, God forbid, the people that are related to him are listening. So the fucking dude was like, uh, ah, fuck it. I'll just tell the story. I didn't do anything. I just finished <laughs> flying. We'll just exploit his fucking tragic accident. Well, nobody knows what. All right. I, I had just done, finished flying, right? Mm-hmm. Which everybody says is so fucking unsafe, right? Mm-hmm. Fly around and look at all this cool shit. 
fly over Silver Lake to see that they took the water out of it. I didn't even realize that. And I came back. I fucking land. You know, say goodbye to everybody. And I'm driving out, you know, to the real scary thing, driving down the fucking street. And I literally pull out. I make a right turn and I don't I don't drive more than 40 yards and I just see this fucking guy I just this old guy takes the turn to come onto the on the little two lane highway that I'm on he's on the opposite side of the road and he like he went too fast and on like a motorcycle you can't just turn the front wheel you're going to go down on a scooter you know what I mean you got to kind of look your way through the turn and lean and your moment, momentum you know you're supposed to look through the fucking turn he he was going too fast and he went into the the fucking island in the middle <laughs> Bill. He fucking he jumped the fucking curb. The whole fucking scooter went up in the back. And he high sided, right? He just gets launched off this fucking thing and he's rolling down the street like a fucking log. Why are you laughing so hard? Because people falling down is fucking hilarious. He was fine. Oh, no. He didn't break anything. He just knocked himself out. He's a little concussed. And then he wasn't wearing a shield. And in the end, he just sort of he was sliding on his face. So I'm going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, as I'm watching it, and I fucking pull over. No, I made sure everybody stopped, and I got out. I was like, dude, dude, all right, just stay there. You're all right. You're all right. And um, and he was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't saying anything, and he has no. fucking raspberry on his face. His pants were torn up. He literally got fucking attacked by a wild animal. And he's fucking laying. I feel terrible that this happened to him, but it's just afterwards, it's just funny. And he was laying there, right? And like one of his legs, he had like up, like he was chilling. And the other one was just straight out like that. And he was just like, ah, ah, and he was like coming around. And I was like, all right, man, I called 9 1. You're fine. You're fine. And then this lady shows up and she just kept going, don't move. Don't move, okay? You're okay. Just don't move, okay? And she kept going, okay? And it started annoying me. And then I almost started laughing. Like, I want to be like, lady. Like, the way you're talking is probably <laughs> <laughs> worse than what the fuck he's feeling right now. So by then, you know, like five or six people had stopped. Everybody called. So this ambulance shows up. I'm like, okay, thank God. And, he, and now he wants to get up. We just kept telling him not to get up. And um, the ambulance pulls up and he just goes, uh, he goes, is he all right? Is he all right? You're like, yeah, yeah, he, he seems to be okay. You know, we're not fucking doctors, but he seems to be okay. And he goes, all right, just tell him not to move. I already have someone on this ambulance. There's another one coming. And then he gets the ambulance and drives away. Yeah. And then we're looking down the street and we don't see any ambulance coming. We're like, what the fuck? And um, finally, one in, uh, a cop finally came up and this guy was fucking priceless. He gets out, right? <laughs> fucking horseshoe bald guy right he's got the whole landing strip he just comes out looking like sergeant Riker from the rookies for anybody's old and he fucking just comes walking he looked the guy from nypd blue the old guy showed his ass with the mustache mm -hmm. minus the mustache he just comes walking up and he just walks right up to the guy dennis he, franz yeah he just walks up like his toes are almost touching the guy's body and he just looks down at him and he goes you all right <laughs> And the guy at that point is going like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And he goes, all right. All right, the ambulance is going to be coming. Like, he just, his level of just like, I, I he must see like people be on fire every day. Yeah, so this guy, exactly. He just sees a scooter and this guy fucked up. He's just like, yeah, yeah, all right. He also seemed way too old to still be in a patrol car. So I think he <laughs> fucked up somehow and got busted down. Or maybe he was on his way to some uh, senior police fucking banquet or some shit and he's just like ah, i'm driving the cruiser they know i'm a cop i have to stop so once that was fine it was funny then we're just standing there waiting for the ambulance but you know we got to get on with that day and uh me and there was this tall older black dude standing there and, this, and he's just like he's like all right man they're here and i was like yeah yeah they're here and we just pulled <laughs> <laughs> we both got in our car and fucking drove away and uh, it was really, you know, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it wasn't too gory a scene. It was just a couple of raspberries and well, stuff. I'm glad he didn't have a but more it was, serious injury. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it wasn't until I got on the highway and I started driving and I started thinking about it and I just started laughing. <laughs> I think it was just more the surprise that, yeah. it, that you saw it. But there is just something... Just watching somebody get fucked up like that. I remember the time I was in Griffith Park and that dude came down the hill in street clothes on a skateboard... He went down that fucking what? hill. What? Are you serious? Dude, this kid where you was... Hike, where you hike up to the observatory? Somebody was going down yeah. on uh, a skateboard? Yeah. That's so stupid. I was just north of where the Greek theater was, and this guy just went, yeah, went flying <laughs> by in this thing. And I was just like, oh, my God, that guy is the shit. 
Like, and I'm thinking, like, well, how's he going to stop? Because this is just downhill till you get into traffic. And all of a sudden, his legs start doing that, yeah. that wobbly fucking thing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no fucking way. And I'm telling you, this guy was going like fucking 30 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> And then he just steps off the skateboard. You always do that either one or two steps and then you're done. He was going so fast. He did like one step and it was like, who's that guy who fucking jumped 30 feet in 1969? Nobody ever broke it. He fucking head first. Yeah. <laughs> Flying. It was like the greatest stunt I ever saw. And he landed too. And he started rolling. Nia, when I tell you this guy, this guy was rolling so fast. He was like a blur. He's like, he would go like, and he'd hit like his elbow, which would shoot him in the air. Go, and, then, and then the best is when you're not going fast enough to keep rolling. And then you just slide in the sand like, all the way down the thing. And I was just like, and the skateboard kept going. And I was, and he was, and he just, he was just not moving. And I was going like, oh my God. And he was so, he started wiping out like 50 yards away from me. And I swear to God, it was a quarter mile walk to get where the fuck he stopped. And he was just laying in the road, not moving. Like I was like, I think this guy's fucking dead. He had, he had no helmet. He had street clothes on. He looked like he just came back from drinking. And he just, he had like this Harrison Ford, like brown leather jacket on. He just fucking launched himself. So I get up. So I, I, I'm getting close to it at this point. He's trying to sit up. He knows he's laying in the middle of the road. And I finally see his skateboard hit the curb on the other side. And bounce into a parked car. And then he like, like crawled. He tried to stand up and he couldn't put any weight on his leg. And he crawled. He crawled over and sat down. And by then I knew he was all right. So I was already starting to laugh. So I was just going like, dude, dude. Doing that dude while laughing. I go, you all right? He goes, he's like, yeah, bro. What the fuck, man? I was just going. And at that point, I'm trying not to laugh. I was just like, dude. I go, that was fucking, that was fucking hardcore, man. I never seen a wipeout like that. If I was filming that fucking thing, dude, it was the most fucking, it was the greatest log roll. Whatever the fuck you call that thing. That dude was just. I never seen it. I can't believe his shoes stayed on. Like, you know, your shoes always fly off whenever you get hit real hard. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tremendous. It's fucking <laughs> tremendous. And it's just as much as you feel for the person, there's just nothing funnier than watching somebody fucking wipe out if they don't die and you don't know them, right? God, God help me, man. Anyways, right. let me do a little podcast read funny. for some uh, for some of the advertising. Oh, it's advertising time. It's advertising time. And let then you sh- do the questions afterward? Yeah, I can get right to those things if, you know, I just don't want you to start, you know, talking to me in a certain way. <laughs> I was going to ask you what you wanted for dinner. I'm starting to get hungry again. Um, something remotely. Oh, here we go. Oh, the advertising. You want to help me read some advertising here? God knows I can't read out loud. They don't want me to read it. <clears throat> well, I can't read this. I actually have the whole fucking... Am I supposed to read the whole menu? I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> this is All why right. you're supposed to look at it before you do the podcast, baby. Yeah, I didn't get into this business to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Apron, everybody. All right, you need to know how to cook. Um, not only do you feel like you know your way around the kitchen, honey, but cooking at home means eating healthier and saving money instead of ordering expensive takeout again. But where do you start? It sounds like one of those old school infomercials. Somebody like looking at all the pans and looks at the camera and shakes their head. Well, I don't know where to start. Did you turn on a burner, you fucking jerk off? Blue Apron. <laughs> Blue Apron has you covered. For less than 10 bucks per meal, Blue Apron delivers all the fresh ingredients you need to create home-cooked meals. Just follow the easy step-by-step instructions. This is actually a cool thing. This is- I, would, I would definitely try that. Can Blue Apron send us some stuff? No! Oh, okay. Neil, we got too much shit. I'm trying to get rid of shit. I don't need it's a bunch of built. Blue Aprons send- hanging around. <laughs> they don't send you Blue Apron. <laughs> they send you food and a recipe card. How do you know? I haven't even finished this. That's what Blue Apron is. What are you talking about? What, how do I know what this is? You're doing the advertising and you don't know what Blue Apron is? They send you the ingredients and then the rest, they send you the exact amount you need so you don't buy too much or too little. Well, then they should call it Blue Recipes, shouldn't they? <laughs> Maybe you do want me to read it. Each meal Blue can Apron. be prepared. And I'm just saying, if I was young, right, and I was, you know, dating or anything, this is a great way. Hey, let's stay in tonight. Well, I wore a little Blue Apron. We can do that. 
Um, each minutes. meal can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. No overwhelming trips to the grocery store. Oh, my God. Where's the cereal? <laughs> <laughs> no more sad takeout. Oh, look at the noodles. No matter how... I love how they just have to shit on everything else. It's convenient. Why do you have to take grocery stores down? <laughs> No matter your dietary preferences, Blue Apron makes it a breeze to discover and prepare dishes like... I am not reading all of these fucking things. At least, at least read three. Let's, we'll do like a little like uh, Donnie and Marie here. I'll read the first one. <laughs> chicken fried chicken with what? <laughs> Have you not heard of chicken fried chicken? You wrote chicken fried chicken. Steak. Oh, chicken fried chicken with yeah. baked sweet potato and quick collard greens. Oh, look at them go. <laughs> shrimp, shrimp po' boy sandwiches with Tribeca bread locked in. The fuck is Tribeca bread? Maybe we should go to blueapron.com. S- steak and, and eggs. Discover it for ourselves. Steak and eggs with kimchi, fried s- rice. That sounds good. I love kimchi. Me too. Spiced catfish with paella style, ri- style rice and See, creamy saffron aioli. Ooh, saffron that aioli. Delicious. That used to be my stripper name. <laughs> Seared pork with spring... That's such an old joke. Don't, don't turn off the uh, computer. No, come on over. Come on. I like you over here. Uh, radishes and sugar snap peas. Hash with ranch yogurt. I haven't heard I half of this shit. That was one word. Oh, radishes and sugar snap peas. Hash oh, with... Oh, no. Oh, no. I guess, yeah. Hash with ranch yogurt. Yeah, I speak the language. That sounds good. Right in your own kitchen. Cook with ingredients <laughs> that you've never used before, like watermelon radishes. Farro. Farro? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. <clears throat> and purple potatoes. I've cooked with purple potatoes. Remember uh, when we used to go to the farmer's market? Oh, like, yeah. Like every Sunday. And those all those dirty people walking around. <laughs> what dirty people? Uh, just, you know. Are you talking about the vendors? No, the lefties. You're talking about like the hippie oh, farmers. Oh, yeah, all those guys. All the man buns. Just f- the fucking <laughs> hair falling into the fucking <laughs> kimchi. That kind of place is where you could definitely buy weed there. As no, no I actually, I don't mind the farmer's market, but I hate how you have to get there. I just hate that. Oh, you got to get there early. You got to get there early. It's like, do I? Let me just go down the street and I'll just get the poison. Uh, and recipes <laughs> between 500 to 700 calories per portion, delicious and good for you. Right now, you can get your first two meals for free at blueapron.com slash burr. That's blueapron.com slash burr. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Actually, I like farmer's market because if they actually are – Local farmers, I like to uh, support them, but I know the corporate food has worked its way in there. You know, they just take off corporate potatoes and they just write, hey, man, potatoes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then idiots like me buy them thinking I'm sticking hey, it to man. the man. Hey, man, potatoes. Only two this week, Nia. Can you believe it? Mm. How great I read these things. <laughs> Helix, a great group. Uh, right now. It's not Helix. Helix. Was that the name of the group? I don't know. Give me an R, R, O, O, C, C, K. What are you talking and about? And what you want to do, rock. And what I want to do, rock you. You don't remember that song? No. It was like, uh, I don't know what it was. It was one of the most bizarre things. And they, for some reason, they were dressed like fucking cavemen. That sounds like an 80s thing. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. It was an 80s thing. Oh, well, you know how old I was in the 80s. Like, how would I? I don't remember certain Yeah, things. but you, you know other things. Well, speaking of robots taking over everywhere, how can you ever make a robot... Do what James Brown did. You can't. You can't. You know what? But there's some fucking nerd trying to insert oppression and pain into a robot to see if they can give it a little bit of soul. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Ex Machina. Yeah. They, they start treating it worse than the yeah, other ones. it's Ex Machina. Yeah. Or Ex Machina, or however you pronounce it. It's All right. Helix. Night after night. I really feel like it's Helix. <clears throat> Helix. Night after night. Two people lay in the same bod. <laughs> Kidding. I was waiting for you to say it's bed. <laughs> night after night, two people lay in the same bed. But when it comes time to buy a new mattress, only one gets their way. Hmm. Until, yeah, the, the fucking top. Until now, introducing Helix Sleep. Helix. Helix, where you can buy mattresses <laughs> online, customized for both of you, for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to helixsleep.com. Answer a few simple questions based on four key preferences do you pee the bed is you- <laughs> these aren't real questions um when you jerk off are you on the couch you're in- do you need a plastic so-and-so mattress cover as a result yeah this is that's why they're so cheap these are old mattresses of bedwetters 
doing? You're supposed to be I'm keeping it entertaining so they listen oh to the rest God. of the information. They know that's not true. <laughs> Until now, introducing Helix Sleep, where you can buy mattresses online customized for both of you for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. Go to helixsleep.com, answer a few simple questions based on four key preferences, and the results will be custom sleep, a custom sleep profile used to build you the most comfortable mattress you'll ever sleep on. Your mattress will arrive at your door, 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 door <laughs> in about a week, and shipping is 100% free. And for couples, hey... Helix customers <laughs> customize. I don't know. Each side customizes each side of the mattress, personalized Ooh. to suit each of your bodies and the way you both sleep. Interesting. Helix customizes re- customers <laughs> report a thirty percent improvement in overall sleep quality. How do you gauge that? You're asleep, right? Because when you wake up, you know whether you've had a good night's sleep or not. All right, fair enough. You have 100 nights to try it out. If you don't love it, they pick it up for free. And then what do they do with it? And give you a 100% refund, no questions asked. Gross. And then what do you do? You throw that back into the rotation? And one of them, only a couple hundred bucks, right? Hey, just what fuck on this side of the bed. She likes it more soft. She what likes are it you hard. Doing? <laughs> You have 100 nights to try it out. Uh, that's why everyone from GQ magazine to Forbes are all talking about Helix Sleep. See? Yeah, yeah. George Clooney has one of these. <laughs> Go to helixsleep.com slash burr and get $50 off your order. That's helixsleep.com slash burr. Helixsleep.com slash burr. <clears throat> I like the idea of having a mattress that's tailored to both of our sides. Look, if bed. you just want to sleep in a different bed, just say it, all right? No, I, I don't think so. Mm, no, of course not. All right. Dollar Shave Club, Joe. DollarShaveClub.com has a special offer for new members to, who join today. You get a free month kit of the Executive Razor when you buy a tube of Dr. Carvey's, Dr. Carvey's Easy Shave Butter. Um, <clears throat> what? <laughs> Dr. Carver's. Oh, I say Carvey's? Yeah, Dr. Carvey. Oh, it's Carver's. I've been saying Carvey the whole time. Dr. Carvey's. <laughs> oh, it's Dr. Carver's. I never noticed that. Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter. <laughs> Dr. Carver's Shave Butter is what it's called. Easy Shave Butter. That was a little too fucking, I don't know. What, what are we making here? Huh? What are we making here? I put this on my face. You sure about that? This is the first time they've ever done something like this. And once you try dollyshaveclub.com, you'll become a proud member like millions of others. One reason is because they deliver amazing razors right to your door for a third of the price of what the greedy razor corporations charge. That means when you join Dollar Shave Club, you can afford to shave with a fresh blade anytime you want, want, want which feels fantastic. You'll get a first-class shave when you use the executive blade without hurting your wallet. Another reason is their Dr. Cavi shave butter. Carver. Carver. Using it with the executive makes the blade glide gently for the smoothest shave ever. 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 Dr. Carver's shave butter isn't your average (laughs) shave cream. It's a unique conditioning formula with high-quality natural ingredients, leaving your skin feeling unbelievably fucking smooth. All right, we get it. And right now, new members who buy a tube of the shave butter get the executive razor for free. They've never done this before. Take advantage of it. And it's only available by going to dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Hey! (laughs) Dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. Um, Ooh. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. That's why I fuck around in them because I'm not going to have people subjected to my fucking reading out loud without, you know, if it's a funny train wreck. Like the way I read is like me watching that old guy fall off the scooter. <laughs> oh, Grandpa. Oh, did you, did, Grampy. Grampy, did you take it too fast? Hey, guess what my Boston Bruins did t- today? Did they do something that's going to put them in the running to be in the Stanley Cup Finals? Uh, the playoffs. The playoffs. playoffs. Last week, you know, we were fucking – Possibly could be, uh, you know, a bunch of shit had to happen. You know, basically the Rangers and the Capitals had to keep losing or whatever. And we, we could have gone past them and been in first place in the Eastern Conference. And then we lost five in a row. Okay. And today we uh, we won our first one. We beat Toronto. Thank God. Congratulations, Brewies. Yeah. It was going to be a shit show. We lost five in a row. We fucking lost to San Jose, Anaheim, the Kings, then the Rangers, and then the Panthers. And the wheels were fucking coming off. And then... uh of course, as always, Bergeron and Chara fucking step up, you know, for the uh, 
I guess the tying goal and then the go ahead goal and what's his face? Bolesky got the fucking empty netter. I missed the whole game because we were at brunch and I was sitting there watching you looking absolutely gorgeous, treating the wait staff. Like- <laughs> Is that why you didn't want to go today? No, I didn't. I didn't no, I didn't want to go because I thought your mom wanted to go to some place where everyone was going to go and everyone was going to show up with their Easter hats and I was going to be standing out in the sun. With, it's going to be a 45-minute wait. If you guys want to go down the street and get some drinks and then maybe come back, we'll give you this vibrating <laughs> square. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. But it didn't um, turn out to be that. No, it ended up being great. It ended up being great. Oh, by the way, I haven't even talked about it. Nia, I played the Terrace Theater last night in Long Beach. Yes. The place where uh, Richard Pryor did the greatest stand-up special of all time. I want to thank everyone who came out. I had such a great time, but for the first 10 minutes, I was literally freaking out, going like, that's where he told the white guy, you know, sit your ass down. You know, this is where he did, my monkeys died. And I remember in the end when I waved goodnight, I remember how he finished his set, the the woman having the orgasm, Mm -hmm. and the whole place goes nuts. And he didn't have to say goodnight. He just waved. Ah. I started to watch the special and I had to stop watching it because I knew it would fuck up my set. But like it is if you, it is the definition of a comic who's just in a zone. He walks out from the beginning to end. It gives me like fucking goosebumps when I watch that special to this day. He, he, he's the greatest. It's not even fucking close. And I got to basically stand and do stand up and I just can't believe it. I, I watched that special since I was a kid and, and you walk in and it looks the exact same where you drive in is where he drove in with his wife when they filmed the special and it all still looks the same and as I was walking in I was getting like the chills and you just walk and, and it's like there it is this is this is it this is the place and it and at the end of the show when I said goodnight Dean Del Rey came out and outroed me and the spotlight went on him so it wasn't on me and so it wasn't in my eyes anymore. I could just see the spotlight hitting the tops of everybody's heads. And that's the way I saw the theater, you know, because I didn't really show the crowd in that special. And um, it was just one of the coolest things ever. And then the night before, I worked a theater in Riverside, California, that they actually debuted Gone with the Wind. The first, you know, before they had the official premiere at Man's Chinese Theater, they wanted to make sure the sound was all right. So they just headed east and they... Uh, they shot it. I don't know. They, they fucking whatever. They played the movie out there, and I got to stand on those stages. It was fucking tremendous. And I want to thank everybody who came out. Um, it was fucking amazing. It was That's fucking great. amazing. Yeah. Um, and lastly, before we get into the questions, is the uh, the Lincoln Continental. All right. I talked to this, you know, this guy who drove us. We got a driver to take us down to Long Beach because I knew I was going to have a couple of whiskeys after that. You know, I was trying to be responsible. So, um, you know, I, I was sitting there going like, you know, I like the Lincoln Continental. I hope they don't fuck it up. I hope they make it fuck with the Mercedes Benz, you know, like let's really make this a nice car. Like fuck with the seven series BMW. I want this thing to be a nice fucking car. And I was saying, it would be cool if they actually brought back the suicide doors. And the driver was going, yeah, they're doing that. The top of the line one's going to have suicide doors. And I went and I looked it up and here's a picture of it. Mm hmm. How sick is that fucking car? That's very cool. Uh, we're, I'm going to post this picture, and it's just the concept car. And as far as I know, they didn't fucking do it. Why wouldn't you do that? Look at that. Look how fucking <laughs> pure. That is the sickest fucking shit ever. <laughs> Mia, look at that car. Yeah, I see. No, it's cool. I'm looking at... You, Hopefully you guys are just you're looking at the picture right now. They even have like the trunk comes up and no, slides forward, no, and then the bottom kicks out, and there's I wish your they fucking could make luggage. It so we can see it in real life. They can't. Well, you know what you have to do is you have to buy the car, and then oh. you got to take it to one of these wizards out here and say, "You see that? I want you to do that." One of those gas monkey guys. T- tell them to fucking do that to the car. Wait, what's this one though? I saw on the bottom. This this is a a Lincoln. Yeah, this is with the LED lights. And in this one, the LED lights, like the, the the Lincoln Continental, their emblem, also lights up in LED lights. That's fucking sick. That's nice. 2017 Lincoln Continental to replace 2016 Lincoln MKS. Yeah. Huh. It, I'm nice. either going to get that or I'm going to get that Dodge Ram RT Sport. Like just the two-door, no extra cab, none of that. I just, I'm, I'm such a Ford guy, but I just fucking love the way the Dodge Ram Hemi f- truck looks. One or the other. Hmm. One or the other, but I'm going to get some, I'll probably get the old man car. That's me, right? <laughs> You're definitely an old man. I am. 
God damn it. You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> I thought it was cool. I guess I'm not. All right. So here we go. Unless they fuck the car up, and then I'll be right back to square one. Um, look at this fucking guy. Wait a second. You are addicted to world star hip hop. Like Look at this you guy. watch these videos constantly. Dude, it's the funniest shit ever. It's the sickest fights, it's the funniest fucking videos. And then there's all this all this rap shit that I, I'm never gonna fucking I'm see that I I'm too out of the loop and I end up seeing like uh, who's the guy I like to Trinidad uh Yes, Bill just Trinidad, Trinidad James. Trinidad James, yes. A fucking that guy's a genius. <laughs> I don't know. It's about a fucking genius. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's totally different. <laughs> you don't think he is? I enjoyed a couple of his songs, but oh, whatever. I wouldn't go that far. You didn't see the fucking video where they had the things in there? I that looked cool as shit to they me. They did that in the fucking the opening to that movie Belly. This is not like a new concept. Look, everything's been done. You could do that to my act. Why, why are you being... Yeah, you're just treating everybody like a fucking waiter this week. I'm trying to give oh, somebody a see, shout out who got win. fucked out of a record deal. You know I what I mean? I'm too, you know, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Only I get to criticize shit. I see that. All right. Let's get on to the... Uh, let's go to the... Uh, let's get to the questions here for this week. All right. Daredevil. Dear Billy Nunchucks. Uh, you know what nunchucks are? Yes, Bill. That was it right there. <laughs> That was it right there. You just asked me if I knew what nunchucks were. I just were. asked you. Yeah, I can't even read out loud. I'm not judging you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last year, someone recommended you to watch uh, Daredevil. I would like to reiterate that a year later, season two is the shit. Uh, the Punisher fucks people up the way he should, and you actually believe the love story. Tons of cool fight scenes. Watch it with the whiskey. Not sure if Neil would love it. But this one's this one's for you. All right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I've heard it's really good. Well, I let's let's watch, let's it, watch but... it. Let's watch it tonight. Okay, we'll watch it. You want to have a whiskey with me? Sure. A whiskey with old Frisky over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> s- <laughs> sorry, skin infection. Oh, the question everybody has not been waiting for. Mm. All right, dear Bill, I was hanging out with this girl, and I think she gave me a quote skin infection. Oh no. Mm. I haven't been with anybody else. I confronted her about it, and she said she didn't have any symptoms. I am 100% sure I haven't been with anyone else, and I contracted it from her. She's acting like nothing happened, and I didn't say I got it from her, but it's still kind of weird. Should I take my chances and get back with her or move on? What kind of skin infection do you have? He means STD. He's just trying to I know. Oh, okay. Um, I was hanging out with this girl. I mean, if you were, if that was the only person that you had slept with in like the last six months and you didn't use protection and, uh, I mean, as long as you told her, just get treated. And I mean, that's up to you if you want to keep banging this girl or not, but, um, don't keep banging this girl. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if she, I mean, cause the thing is she could at least be like, all right, well, let me go get tested just in case. Yeah. And then you could both be tested for everything and get treated for everything. And yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Okay. And then go your separate ways. This is how this thing starts off. Yeah, it's not good. He obviously likes banging her. Otherwise, he wouldn't be asking this question. There must yeah. not be too many prospects on the horizon if this is what it's come down to. And then I'll, I'll go the <laughs> obvious one. She's really good at fucking because mm-hmm. she's done it a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Of maybe, 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 well, maybe she got, un- maybe she got unlucky. Maybe she just had the gift. I don't fucking know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I hope whatever you got use is curable. Use protection. Go to the doctor. Get treated. Use protection. Like, don't be an idiot. Stop raw dogging out here. Okay. New girl. <laughs> no, new car. Sorry. New car. <laughs> that was like a Freudian slip. Like, get a new yeah. girlfriend. Get the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Ah, that's brutal. Makes you happy to be married. All right. New car. Mm-hmm. Dear Billy Blue Book, I'm in the market <laughs> for a new car like yourself. I want to get something used, something with character, but my girlfriend thinks I'm holding on to the past and I'm trying to be hip in my own way. She wants me to get a Passat. What? 
Do you know how much of a creepy sellout I'd have to be to drive a Passat? That is your not thoughts? a sexy car. Why would your girl want you to get a Passat? That's some lame. I would want because you to you know get what? a sexy They're... man car, not a fucking Passat. This... Wait, can you pull an image up of a Passat? But I also fucking drive an eight-year-old dented Prius. <laughs> I know, but you're... I mean, I'm mean, i a frugal son of a bitch. Yeah, it's, I think it's a little bit different. Why? Why is that different? Well, you didn't tell me to get the fucking thing. Do you know what it is? You know what it is out there? There's so many fucking men and women out there that that will derail your fucking dreams. Oh, wait. I wonder if she wants him to get a car like a Passat because I feel like that's a reasonable, safe car because she's trying to get you to save up for a ring or an apartment or something. Yeah, look at that thing. That is not. Oh my god, that's as that's soulless the most as my boring car. ass car I've ever seen in my fucking life. That is that is so boring. Get yeah. a Prius at least. It's like what is that? A Passat? I don't okay. know what that is. Whatever. Um, that's horrible. And the fact that Germans made that, Germans usually fucking crush it. Well, then I'm sure it's very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that one alone. <laughs> Um, but other than that, I'm not into it. I think the bigger thing here is what happens to a lot of people when they get into a relationship is, look, there's definitely going to be some compromises. But like when your heart's fucking racing and you want to fucking do something or the person you're with and you can see it like this is something they want. This is something they have a passion. This is something that's going to make them happy. For you to try to fucking talk them out of it, like why would you do that? She wants a ring. That's why. And she's trying to get him not to spend, have to spend money on an older car that needs repairs and needs this and that and the other when he could be saving for a ring. I guarantee it. That's what you're thinking? I absolutely think so. Well, if he gets a used car, isn't that cheaper than going out and getting a new Passat? Uh, what, what is it? I'm, what do you want? To, I want to get something used, something with character. Things I'm holding on to the past and trying to be hip in my own way. So, but does he mean What's wrong with having a, little like bit of style? a classic car? He must yeah, be a classic that car. That must mean, yeah, something like that. Yeah. She wants what me it is. to get a Passat. Right. She wants him to get a nice, cost effective, modern, you know she like, is? we're going to have a family and a house someday okay. car. That's what that's about. Read, oh. read in between the lines, fellas. Read in between the lines. Oh, I thought she was the dream catcher, you know? Dream catcher? Dream catcher is like your dream. Hey, this is my dream. And then she catches it and she puts it in her pocket. Like a dream killer. Dream killer, right? But you got to catch it first to kill it. (laughs) (laughs) It's like an ant. You can't kill it unless you You just decide that things are what you want them to be. That a dream catcher is really what a dream killer is. But you have to catch it first before you kill it. Catch it before you kill it. Okay, honey. I live in my own little world over here. (laughs) All right, magma. Magma. Okay, dear Bill, have you heard? Have you heard about the lonesome loser? Have you heard of Magma? I just saw them in L.A. They definitely sound like some sort of fucking metal band here. I've never heard of them, but went with a friend of mine who works in post production. The drummer is sixty eight and unreal. All right, nice. I already love this band. He plays a combination of jazz and progressive style beats, tons of soul. The music is interesting and operatic. Ooh. He invited his he invented his own language and it's really out there. Please look some up and give your reaction on the podcast. Well, let me fucking do it really quickly. We're running out of time here. Let's see here. What do you think? You think you're going to like it? Magma? I'm curious about it. I'm surprised that Dude, I went I went and I saw this crazy fucking band. Bobby Yo. Lee's Bobby Lee's brother's in it, and I went and I saw this crazy fucking band. Like, I don't, I, I got to the show late. I can't remember the name of the band, but they were fucking whole. Oh, yeah. Somebody tagged me in a picture you took with one of the band members. I had the best time. They had this one. You have to look them up so you can give them a shout out. Okay. I had the best fucking time. All I remember was their fucking, their closing song was, it was like the guitar was like really like thrash, thrash, thrash. And the guy just was going like, no, 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 it was awesome and funny, and I was just going, you should put that on an album cover and then have all the lyrics like written out. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, they're French. Oh, they are? Magma, right. the weirdest band in the world. All right, let's, let's see what we got here. All right, I'm already in. I kind of like it too. I would go see that. I that like reminds totally me. Totally vibe out to this kind of stuff. You know, it reminds me of. I used to go see. Used to go see Oz Noy down in the village. Who? Oz Noy. Uh huh. O Z N O Y. Yeah, he used to always is. have like Will Lee would be down there and Keith Carlock would sit in. Just had all these insane drummers. Um, 
Look at, Dude, look at that guy in the drum is the shit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I love it. They all look a little long in the tooth, actually. <laughs> Dude, these guys are all beasts. That guy, the bass player, looks like the cop that walked up to the guy in the fucking scooter. Yeah, all right. Oh my god, I love these guys. I'm, I'm Uh-oh, in. Oh, it's speeding up. Uh oh, what's gonna happen? Hang on. Well, I can't leave it here. Here we go. Let me, uh, let me fast forward so you don't have to sit through all this. Dude, I would just... Uh, this is Yeah, this is when it starts yeah, getting weird. It gets all fucking... Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm in. I'm in. You know what? I feel like if there was... If we had our own version of the Andy Warhol's factory or something like that, like a big loft space downtown where we just had a bunch of our artist friends and assorted weirdos, we can have magma playing in the background and it just would make a lot of sense and weird projections. Yeah, because you could drown out all those assholes that hang around with people <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm not an Andy Warhol fan I on, know you're on not. any you level. You like his art? Or you don't like his, like, persona. No, I respect the originality of it, but I also just feel like a lot of it was smoke and mirrors, and it was very, like, that hipster sort of... Oh, he's sort of the, like origi- the, the original of, like, that hipster shit, like, I'm going to paint yeah. a soup can. And, like, it's, it's some sort of comment on capitalism and everything, and it's just like, all right. But is, it, is era- it a really a, a deep comment on it? Because it's not moving me... I don't know. I mean, I like Andy Warhol. I like his stuff. I feel like that was a very cool time to be in New York City during that time. I feel like I would have loved to have been a part of that scene. But um, It just seemed yeah. to me like it was a bunch of nerds trying to be cool, pretending. Like, a lot of hipsters to me. I think there were, were a lot fucking... of misfits that found each other, and they created, like, their own little world, and they became cool because of that. That's what I think. All right. Because there's a bunch of like, you know, Whatever. transgendered what, 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 people and just like, yeah. Oh, and they're just automatically cool, and what, right? They're no, just I'm automatically t- cool. Can you just listen to what I'm saying? <laughs> like there's no asshole transgendered people? Can I explain to you <laughs> what it was? The bringing together of all these different kinds of people. And that was different in New York City. Uh, yep. It was like a whole birth of interesting like outsider perspectives and giving them like a platform and like you're a freak and you're cool. And, yeah, no, like, I absolutely what... think. So then, like, the, the uh, what is wrong? Why can't, why, if I have a different opinion, you gotta fucking get upset? No, it's not that you have a different opinion. It's that you literally didn't even let me finish my thought before you just hopped on that whole thing. And that well, just makes I you sound I interrupt. Dumb. I interrupt. That's what I do. <laughs> Fine. You're taking this way too seriously. Look, do I have any sort of artistic style? Look, look at me. <laughs> look like I'm in a Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm going to you... sit here and criticize fucking Andy Warhol. Who the fuck yeah. am I? <laughs> oh, yeah. I took an, an Elvis cover that somebody else already created, and then I, I painted red and blue stripes across Andy it. Andy Warhol could have very easily made that poster. That's the kind of stuff that he made. Actually, there was a poster of him and uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat that was kind of like similar What, my, my tour poster? Yeah, like the kind of like battle of them boxing and stuff. Like that poster could 100% have been what Andy Warhol did if you were famous back in the day. That's all I'm saying. So you're saying he's not original? I'm saying the person that did that perhaps is not. What, putting a head on something? Was he the first guy? That, he's the first there's guy with Photoshop shit? There's a shit? whole style to that poster, which is really cool, by the way. And like that's it reminds me a little bit of what Warhol might have done. That's all I'm saying. All right. When's the well, last when, time well, you when, even went to a museum, though? Like, let's be honest. About I don't your... like them. <laughs> I, I really don't like it. Look, if it's, if it's a bunch of if it's old cars... If it's paintings, if it's old cars. If it's paintings, uh, cars. You know, there's a big debate actually in the art community. Are automobiles works of art? Yes. And, and they of and course. they took a Ralph Lauren's car collection and they stuck it in one of those fucking stuck up museums there, MoMA or whatever the fuck it is, Museum of Natural History. The the. I don't think they put it in the museum. The of fucking the rendezvous on the. F- Fifth Avenue, whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> Every other fucking broad I dated in New York, that was always the first date. Like, they, oh, let's go to a museum. It's like, will you stop acting like you're smart? <laughs> stop doing this. Just because 
you're dumb doesn't Stop mean trying, that to, trying to be smart. Oh, for fuck's sake. So let's just go out and get a drink and see if we can deal with each other. I got to go fucking <laughs> sit there and stand next to you in silence reading shit about dinosaur bones. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'll meet you there. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't like them. I don't like... One of the worst museums I ever went to was when we went. We were in Vatican City, and we should have gone to the right just to look at that overrated painting on the fucking ceiling. We went to the. I just want to. So can we just pause? And I just. They know really what I'm talking need to about. Point out that they he's know. Talking about the Sistine Chapel. And so that, fucking and that you're overrated. Criticizing the art that was in the Vatican, like this art that's like hundreds upon hundreds. Yeah, of years I'm telling you what right now. Like this amazing. If I bought like, that building, historical fucking art. If I bought that building, the, the Sistine Vatican. Chapel, I would turn that into a cigar room, and I would let that <laughs> smoke go right up into that overrated. Dude, they make it seem like it's fucking huge. There's no way it. Took that long. Did, Bill, you went in there and you looked at it for like five seconds and then you were like ready to get a fucking panini. Bullshit. Yeah, you I'm going to take it I'm going to take fucking guy. You know what he was? He was like the original contractor. They said, hey, can you paint my ceiling? Uh, yeah, yeah. This will be easy. I'll have this done in like three fucking weeks. <laughs> fucking four years later. Yeah, well, the fucking the green paint's on back order. He's got 20 other ceilings he's fucking working on. Um, all yeah, right. You can't tell me when you went through the whole Vatican thing and you watched every fucking Fair vestiment money. that every goddamn pope wore. Like after a while, you're like, I get it. They all wore these ponchos with a cross on it. I was fascinated by it because I love religious art. Oh, OK. Here, Cleo. What about sexual assault? What about it? The fucking 800 pound gorilla. Why didn't they have a little something about that in there? Um, yeah, because I kind of went. Uh, yeah, well, that would have ruined the. Uh, well, it was an art the way they hit all those pedophiles all those years. <laughs> That's an art form to be moving all those chess pieces around while still collecting the money and not paying taxes. What does that have to do with the art that we're talking about seeing at the Vatican? Well, if I was to talk about a certain somebody's sitcom right now, I think you would bring up some of his uh, offstage behavior. Are we talking about Cosby? No, we're talking about fucking slappy white. <laughs> Uh, the, the priests weren't uh, the ones that were painting the fucking Sistine Chapel bill. No, I'm, ta- I'm not talking about that. So. I'm talking about when we looked at every fucking fork and chalice mm-hmm. that Pope John Paul the fucking 58th. <laughs> when you go into the Sistine Chapel, which admittedly I thought was the Sixteen Chapel. Did you really? You don't remember that? We were staying in oh, line. Right. Remember I said, <laughs> you know what I would do because this line is so fucking long? If I lived here, I would open a bar across the street and I would call it the 17th Chapel. <laughs> and you're like, why would you call it that? I was like, yeah, you know, the 16th Chapel, the 17th Chapel. And you just looked at me and your eyes narrowed and you said, Bill, it's the Sistine Chapel. And I said, oh. <laughs> and that's my story about Rome. All righty. Oh, fuck all you guys. All right, 47 that- years old, ladies and gentlemen. See, well, yeah, I, I'm not into that shit. Okay. You know? Okay. See that? Look at you. You're an angel. You can That's- see through my stupidity. You don't have to be into it. I still love you. It's, you know, You're it still is- a good guy. It's still, you know. What? But the reality is that there, <laughs> there are certain things that are common knowledge. I really should have known that. I would think so, but I bet a lot of people think it's the 16th chapel. You know something? I don't, uh, (coughs) I don't like, I don't get embarrassed by shit like that. (laughs) You really don't. No, if I think, I I would, yeah, yeah, I thought it was the 16th. I didn't know it was (laughs) the 16th. And then everybody, oh my God, it's the 16th. It's like, did, is anything in there (laughs) from something that you created? (laughs) Then shut up. What are you? Oh, that was the Apollo 13 mission? Oh, really? Are you a fucking astronaut? <laughs> yeah. You're just sitting in this diner with me getting fucking eggs. Aren't you? And they're not the farmer's market ones either. Is All this right. why you don't like the, the museums? Do you feel like there's a pretension in people who like art and stuff like that? It's too much fucking shit. It's too much reading. <laughs> it's too much reading. Oh, my God. And it just keeps going and going and going. And then there's people whispering. Oh my God, look at this up here. Have you seen this? Shh. <laughs> That's what happened to me in, this, in the Sistine Chapel. 
when we walked in there, I was just like, oh, wow, it's kind of small. And they went, shh. Oh, I wanted to put that guy's head right through the I fucking mean, well, stained glass we were, window. We were in a church, so it's like a holy place. So, you know, you had to keep it. Well, I would think they went on a certain level of noise to drown out the children screaming <laughs> in the basement. Oh, my God. They deserve it. Fuck them, pieces of shit. Um, we can't, we can't end on that. <laughs> Why isn't the dog coming in here? I'm a little concerned. Oh, Cleo! Because she's, oh, uh... The doors are closed. Oh, poor thing. She's right there, right? Baby? All right, that's the podcast for this week. I'll check in on you. Oh, she was sleeping. On Thursday. What's that? Oh, she was sleeping. Okay, cool. All right. She was just sleeping. Well, thank you for, uh, hanging out on the podcast. Thanks for having me. All right. I'm glad you came by. I don't think those stories of people falling off shit would have been as funny. <laughs> I had somebody to bounce it off of. Oh, look who's here. Hi, Sleepy. The old gray bear. Yeah. Our senior dog. I know. We just realized our dog's a senior now. She's eight. She's eight and a half years old. Starting to get a little bit of white in her face. Yep. That made me sad and it made me happy. Yeah. You know, she had a rough first year and a half and she's just been fucking chilling ever since. Haven't you, Cleo? She looks great, though. And she's still she adorable. Does. She's still our little baby, no matter what. Well, I think she ought to pay rent at this point. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. And once again, seriously, man, thank you to everybody that came out this weekend. Uh, for those shits <laughs> that scratching. The shows um, at Riverside and the Terrace Theater. And I want to thank Dean Del Rey for crushing it both nights. And... Um, that's it. I got Canada coming up later on this week. I'm going to be in Ontario. I don't even know where. Ottawa and a bunch of places. Um, I think Windsor. I have no idea. They're all on my website. Um, I'm bringing... Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I better hit the fucking treadmill because I'm bringing fucking the pride of New Jersey, Paul Verzi, and the, the godfather of the Rose Bowl tailgate, Joe Bartnick himself. He's, uh, he's going to be coming along too. And... Uh, It's going to be a killer fucking show. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.